Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Greetings, greetings. Welcome to our teleconference this evening. God bless you all joining us tonight. We want to just give God praise and glory. We have so much to thank Him for. He's a great God. He's a, he's a great provider. He's a great healer. He's a great deliverer. Praise God. So we thank God for this time that we come together to talk about Jesus. Hallelujah. One songwriter says, I feel so good when I talk about Jesus. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good. And it's just because we are, we are the Bible says, my heart is indicting a good matter. It's because our heart is indicting a good matter while we talk about Jesus and his goodness. So we're going to continue our topic today, tonight. Um, God is not a mystery. That is the topic. Um, this is part two. God is not a mystery. The last last week we talked about um, how God um, told Adam to replenish the earth, and you know the disobedience of Adam and what it caused, the problem it caused from there on in. How the devil lied to lied, and how Eve even took the fruit and eat of it even though she they were commanded not to Adam eat of the fruit and so one thing led to another praise the Lord so today to this evening we're going to talk about God is not a mystery but subtopic is God repents yeah subtopic God repents Praise the Lord. But before I do, let me have a short word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless your holy name. Your glorious, wonderful name. Your name is above every name. Hallelujah. Angels bow down before your name. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth glorify your name. We thank you. Bless everyone that is joining us and those who are will join us. Pray you will lead us and direct us and let hallelujah and con help us to look to you, Lord, and help us, Lord, to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that is due to your name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, tonight, tonight, today, went to Peckham. We had a lovely service down there in Peckham. God bless the brethren down there. And we just thank God for all the children of God, those people, those who love the Lord, those who want to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. We thank God for them. And so we had, we had a wonderful time. God, God blessed us. God is good. So we want to look at um, the scriptures taken from Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. And we want to see what happened in Genesis chapter 6. Um, very interesting story. And as I say, God is not a mystery. God is, God is a lot about God is a lot about me and you. 
how we perceive things, how we understand things, and action that we would take under circumstances that in front of us. So there's not a lot difference from what, what God has done and what we would have done if we were in that position where God is. Because, you know, God is God. And, you know, God has to make a decision when something is not right. And, you know, his God is to fix it. Because he created things, you know, he, if a man make a motor car, then his car is not working. That man who made the motor car is his duty to fix it if it's not working properly. So if there's something going wrong with the creation that God created heaven and the earth, and if something is going on wrong, then obviously it's God who created it. It's, it is his job to fix it, you know, and... Uh, We've seen that God is trying to fix the earth from Adam disobedient. God has tried over and over and every time there's always something else, there's always something wrong. It's just like, you know, you have an you have appliance or something and one, t one thing go wrong, you fix it. Another thing go wrong, you fix it. And then you know after, after a few times things is going wrong, things is going wrong. You say, boy, I, I need to get a new appliance because this one is just not doing what it's supposed to do. And it's causing me too much problem and so forth. So it is with this world. So it is with man who God created. And I'm looking um, at um, Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to read a few verses from verse 1 to 18. And then we'll go through it step by step. Genesis chapter 6, it says, And it came to pass that men began to multiply upon the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took unto them wives of all they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is also flesh. My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is also his flesh. Yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also, after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they were and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which is of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man, which is great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. I repeat this verse, and it repented the Lord that he made man upon the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man, a perfect man, a, and perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence and God looked upon the earth 
and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee a ark of gopher wood. Whom shall thou make in the ark? And shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shall thou make in the ark, and it, and in it a cubit shall thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shall thou set at the side thereof, with lower, second, and third story shalt thou make it. And behold, even I, I, even I, will bring a flood of water upon the earth and destroy all flesh wherein it is the breath of life from under the heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. Amen. Amen. Very interesting story of the antediluvian days and the days preceding the flood and what, how did this happen and what caused it to happen? The, the Word of God clearly explains what happened in those days. As it says in verse 1 of Genesis 6, It came to pass when man began to multiply upon the earth and the daughters were born unto them. So, naturally, men multiply. Nothing wrong with multiplying because God did tell Adam that he should multiply and replenish the earth as we spoke about last week. So multiplication wasn't a problem. But it says the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fear. Who were the sons of God? My understanding of the sons of God is those that were thrown out of heaven. Angels that were thrown out of heaven because of Satan's rebelliousness against the Almighty God. And the angel, Archangel Michael, has thrown him out. He was kicked out of heaven with one third of the angels that was in heaven. One third of the angels was thrown out of heaven. What a thing! Because of the devil's rebellion. So now the sons of God, which I, which we understand to be these angels, they saw the daughters of men that they were fear, and angels were not made to have relationship. With human. They were not made to have relationship with women, but they took on bodies and they took on to them wives of men, which was contrary to not contrary to nature. And because of that, it says they they rose mighty men. You know, giant men that came out of those relationships. 
And if we think about um, Goliath, maybe Goliath was a descendant of those giants that he stood before David, maybe four times the size of David, but yet David went up against him. But these were the type of a product that was coming out of the coming into this world. And because the, the, the country is not natural for that relationship, then it breeds evil. And the Bible says, God saw <clears throat> and said there were giants in the earth. That caused the natural process, <clears throat> natural how a child should be born and how a child should grow. That changed the process altogether because it was the will against God. It's against the laws. Angels are not supposed to have physical relationship, but because of the rebelliousness <clears throat> against God, <clears throat> sorry, they took, they took unto them the daughters of men. They were giants in the earth in those days. And after that, when the Son of Man came unto the daughters of men, they bare them children. The same became mighty men of old, men of renown. That was just not God's plan. And, you know, the topic is, God is not a mystery. God is not a mystery. It was not God's plan for the sons of men to take on to them the daughters. The sons of God should not have taken on the daughters of men. And so, because of that, it grew, wickedness grew upon the earth. Wickedness. And God is not a God did not create wickedness. God, God plans for man is righteousness, peace, love, joy. But what we see here is the, the devil and his angel destroying the plan of God, trying to destroy the plan of God. God is not a mystery. If it were you or if it were me in the situation, you created something beautiful and then someone come and break it apart, make it not what you plan to make it. Of course, you would not be happy. You would not be pleased. Any one of us. And it wasn't the plan of God that this should be. But because of the evil of the enemy, the devil himself, and those that were cast down with him. In verse 5 it says, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Wickedness. I mean, some of the things we see in today, we, we, we see that it's wicked, wickedness. Uh, we, 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 we couldn't start to list the things that is going on in the world today, which we can see is wickedness. The mere, even if we think about the natural, the war that is going on in Ukraine, senseless war. If we think about the senseless war which we have seen in um, Iraq, Libya, Syria, Afghanistan, how many innocent people die for nothing. That is wickedness. God has no part in that. No part. God has no part in wickedness. But God saw the wickedness of man in the earth. That his imagination, this is on his heart. And we know everything comes from the heart. Or every, everything comes from the heart. Everything comes from the heart. It's, it's the heart that defiles us. Jesus told us clearly. It's not what we go, what we eat that defiles us. It's what come out of the heart. And it says that the every imagination, every thought of the heart of man was only evil. Only evil. Only evil. 
that was not God's plan. That man should even imagine evil. It was not God's plan. That even the thought of evil is not God's plan. But God saw wickedness of man. You know, when, if God, when God looked down upon the earth right now, God is not pleased. God is not pleased. And what God did in those days, God is going to do it again. God is going to do it again. What is God going to do? Destroy the world. That is what God is going to do. Destroy the world. So God saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth. And that every imagination, the heart, of his heart, was to do evil continually. The Bible says that there are some people who, who will not sleep in their bed. They will not sleep unless they plan some evil act. What do you think about these people? They can't sleep properly unless they, unless they, they create an evil act. And that was it in those days. And it was, and now this is verse 6, that we never thought this would happen. In verse 6 it says, it repented God that he made man upon the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Just imagine my brethren, imagine God wanted nothing but good for man. God want nothing but peace, righteousness, love, joy, fulfillment, abundance, blessings, peace, everything that is good. That was God's plan. But when God looked down at this day in the day, antediluvian day before the flood, God saw just what he didn't want it. And it says he repented God. He repented the Lord. My God. God says sorry. Sorry that I made man. He said sorry that I made man upon the earth. All the good plan that God had made for man. Was turned upside down. And in verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. I will destroy man. It's not easy, but there's, when, when, when it comes to choice, there was no choice. And God had no choice. Because man was continually imagining evil. Can you imagine what we're living in a time now when you don't even feel safe to go out on the street? You know, when we think about the heart of men, you know, this young boy that stabbed that young girl last week or the week before. Just for, for what reason? For what reason? This is wickedness. This is wickedness. For what reason did he kill that young girl? The young girl didn't start her life. And he took a blade, a 15-inch blade, and stuck in her. This is wickedness. And God looked down on this thing. And it says, can you imagine God's heart being grieved? Can you imagine? Oh, God's heart become grief because of what he saw. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created upon the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowl of the air, for it repented me, 
و شمه دم من من oh my lord God said he repented me so he had created man because man has gone away from my ordinance man has gone away from my commandment man has gone away from serving me and serving the devil how sad but it says here that but Noah oh praise God oh God will always find a man God will always find a man even just one God will always find a man to prolong life but nor found grace in the eyes of the Lord. If it's just you one, if it's just me one, if it's just one away, one of us, make, let, let us find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Let us find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. So God can say, come, I have a plan. Let us find grace in the sight of, in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace. Noah will accepted God. Noah honor God. Noah serve God. Noah walk with God. Noah did what was pleasing in the eyes of God. And God's Found, no found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know, every one of us who love the Lord, believe that, you know, the, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous. The eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous and his ear is open to their cry. The eyes of the Lord was upon Noah because he love God he pleased God he hated wickedness and because God found no found grace in the sight of the Lord and these are the generations of Noah so Noah had three sons but it says Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation and Noah walked with God Noah was a just man. You know, when you're just, you, you, you know, you, you, you're, able to, um, you're able to make good judgment. You're able to do what is right. You're able to serve God in spirit and in truth. When, you, when, you are, when, are, when, you are, when we are just, God is pleased. When we rightly divide the word of truth, when we rightly judge righteously, when we love righteousness and hate wickedness. Noah was such a man. He loved righteousness and he hated wickedness. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just and perfect man. God always has a man. Even one man, God always have a man. And Noah was a man who was just, perfect, and he walked with God. It was like Enoch also walked with God. But the Bible says Enoch walked with God. And God took him. Because his work was done. Noah walked with God. And God could use him. Noah begat three sons. Shem, Ham and Japheth. The earth was also corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. Even as it is today, it is corrupt. 
God is looking down up now upon a corrupt world and God is not pleased and God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt all flesh had corrupted his ways upon the earth you see the way it is <clears throat> we don't have to do anything at all to serve the devil but it takes effort <clears throat> to serve God it takes effort to serve God we can live in this world and just just don't do nothing automatically we become the servant of the devil automatically we become a puppet in the hands of the devil we don't do nothing but if we follow Jesus take up our cross it requires effort and nor was such he knew it requires effort to serve God and he put in the work he put in the work he put in the effort and God was pleased and God was pleased and God said unto Noah in verse 13 God said to Noah and as I said our topic is God is not a mystery brethren God is not a mystery let us not call God a mystery God is God you know the Bible says let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus Jesus was the mind of God Jesus Christ was the mind of God and the Bible tells us as Paul writing into the Philippians let the mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you and I that's not mystery if we can adapt the mind of God that's not mystery we have a mind but our mind is our own we need to have a renewed mind so we want to think like Jesus we want to think like God we want to think like Noah we want to think like Abraham we want to think like those patriots of old who please God who God could come and said in verse 13 it says God said unto Noah you know God gave man dominion over the earth God created the earth he created the land he created the sea he created all that creepeth upon the earth and all that is in the sea and all that all the birds of the air he created everything he created everything but it was everything he created went out of control because of man because of man and God said unto Noah the end of all flesh has come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them through man behold I will destroy them with the earth you know, as I said, if we if we have anything that you know, if we make anything, if we have anything that is not working, and every time, you know, we try to fix it, it breaks down. It's come to a time when we said uh, we better just throw it out, throw it out. It's not working. Throw it out. And this is how God look upon the earth. And this is how, if we're in God's stead, we will probably look at it in the same way. It's not working. The imagination of man was wickedness in his heart. Wickedness in his heart. God said, Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Destroy them. Why would, why would, God, put, why would God accept a world of wickedness? Why would he? Why would, why would we expect that God will accept his wonderful creation, his beautiful creation, and all the beautiful things he had created? Why would you think that God would accept it when it becomes corrupt, when it becomes wicked? Why, why would he accept it? 
Why should he accept it? Would you accept it? So God is not a mystery. He's not a mystery. Man is the mystery. Because man is disobedient, inconsistent. Inconsistently disobedient. So God said, I will destroy them with the earth. God destroyed the world before. And God is going to destroy it again. As beautiful as it may seem to some of us, the beauty is that we see is fading, fading, fading away. Everything is fading away. So God said to Noah, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. That must be some hard wood, I imagine. Whom shall thou make in the ark and pitch it within and without? Make sure it don't leak. <coughs> so when they pitch it, it's to make sure it don't leak. And it, and this shall, so God gave Noah how he must build the ark and how the size, the height, the width, the breadth and everything. And how he must build it and how he must put a window and a door in it. And it says, you can give it, put a window in the ark and so forth. And first, second and third story. It's just three floor high. So you can imagine the size of that ark. And the Bible says it took him 120 years to build. Can you imagine? It took no 120 years to build that ark. Working day in and day out. And saying, repent. For there's going to be rain upon the earth. My God, my God. Noah said, there's going to be rain. Repent. And I imagine as today you go out on the street and you're trying to preach and talk about Jesus and people just laugh and look at your past and think, you know, something is wrong with you. Same thing it was in the days of Noah. 120 years to build the ark. And God said, Behold, even I, I will bring a flood of water upon the earth and will destroy all all flesh wherein there is breath in life of life from under the heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. God cannot God cannot entertain wickedness. God will not entertain wickedness as long as there is wickedness upon the face of the earth and the wrath of God will be upon man. The wrath of God will be upon man unless man repent. But coming to the point when God told Adam, um, Noah to go into the ark, the Bible says when that time come, they, you know there's a time for everything. The Bible says there's a time for everything under the sun. There's time to live and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to reap. A time to gather and a time to scatter. There is going to be a time when God is saying enough is enough. But what God, the plan of God, is to take his people out of the world before that time come. And the Bible tells us about the taking away of the church. Behold, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. What God is going to do when God is ready He's going to take his people out of the world through the rapture of the church. That the dead in Christ 
shall rise first and we who are alive. Can you imagine a time when you see people, Christian people who had died, who had died years ago and when the, that time come and Jesus come, those graves will be open and those souls will be risen up. Hallelujah. The souls of the righteous that lay asleep in the earth, when Jesus comes, their soul will be risen up and they'll be caught up in the rapture of the church. And it says, we, they shall be caught up. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the ear. Then when that time comes, my God, when that time comes and the grace of God is taken from the earth because now we are in a dispensation of grace. But when that time comes and the grace of God is taken out of the earth, the Bible says, he that let it will let until he's taken out of the earth. When the church is gone, it is going to be held down here. It is going to be held down here, Bridgman. Because there will be no, no grace when the Spirit of God take the church out of the world. My God, we shall be caught up. We shall be caught up to meet him. We shall be caught up to meet him. And so let us purify ourselves. Behold, now, right now, we are the sons of God. We are now the sons of God, so the Bible says. But it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Oh, glory be to God. What a day. What a day that will be. What a day that will be. When my Savior I shall see. Hallelujah. When I look upon his face. The one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand. Brethren. God Almighty will take us by the hand and lead us through to the promised land. What a day. What a day that will be. What a day that will be. Praise the No more crying. No more sighing. No more headache, backache, footache. No more arthritis, no more sugar, no more, uh, no, no more, the, no, 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 nothing more. But joy and happiness. What a day, brethren, let us strive to enter. Let us strive to enter into the gates. Let us strive to enter. Heavens is better than this. There's nothing down here. There's nothing. There is nothing down here. <laughs> Whatever is down here is going to just fade away. It's just gonna it's gonna evaporate, Let's put it this way. This world will just evaporate. It will just evaporate like like a vapor. It will just evaporate. There's nothing down here. Now, in closing I saw I saw a evangelist, a, a, a televangelist, televangelist, who used to minister before thousands and thousands of people. And I saw this televangelist. He's looking quite, you know, he's looking quite down and very not what I expect. Like even the grace of God has left him. And this, he's still telling people to sow seeds. I was Googling this evangelist. 
this um, tele evangelist and um, his net worth is 70 million, 70 million. And he's, he, he looks like he's not well. But he's still asking people to sow seeds. My God. My God. What is this? What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? The Bible says it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The great wise man Solomon says, God, give me not too much riches, lest I forget thee. Neither give me too much poverty, lest I grieve thee. But give me things convenient. And that is our sentiment. That should be our sentiment. The wise man who God made wise among all, among all men. So, brethren, let us give God thanks. Let's give God praise. Let's give God glory because God is not a mystery. Never think that God is a mystery. God is not a mystery. Man is the mystery and the devil who control the lives and minds of men. May the good Lord bless you. We reach the end of our service. God bless you and um, thank you all for joining. I'm going to ask Pastor Winston to give us a, a few words before we close. It's just good to see everyone. God is good. Pastor Winston. Greeting, Lord, greeting, in the mighty name of Jesus. Greetings, sir, greetings. And a wonderful God. You are pleasant there, church, today. Amen. Holy Spirit is moving today. Amen. You can't live without the Holy Spirit. Because it's my joy and my peace. in my love. I was looking at Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Go out with might. Put on the whole arm of God that he may be able to stand against the will of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual principality, against power, against rule of darkness in, I, in this world, against spiritual wickedness in our places. Therefore, Take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil days, and having done all to stand. Virgin, my encouragement to you all today is to stand. Yeah, amen. For Jesus. Come on, we're we living in the perilous time. We say, I'm like a wounded lion. But the word of God is calling us and must. Finally, my brethren, be strong. So, brethren, please be strong. Stay strong. Don't depend on men. Others have to depend on God. God is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. God is the Lord of Sharon. He's the Lady of the Wise. He's Brother Morning Star. He's the King of Glory. And Isaiah 55, 5 and 6 says, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I gird thee with the thought that thou not know me, though that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. Mm. I am the Lord. And there is no, no one else. We know what sure I say. That is there for us. Don't know why God is on, us, on your side. So you know what's going on. People do their own thing, carrying their own way. But there is a God 
and let's continue on this pathway. And God is God, and you are not like Him. You have spared my life. You have called me from out of darkness and placed me in marvelous light. So I want to stay strong, and when you please stay strong, stay close to God. I will not deal with like a roaring lion. Then to destroy you, then to bring you down. Then to make you go backward and then going forward. So keep on looking up. Keep on holding on to Jesus. Keep steadfast, brethren. Can I rest in flesh and blood? Mm. Peace and wickedness in high places. So take on the whole arm of God. Take on God, I can help you. He will help you, he will keep you, he will guide you, he will strengthen you. They want to bring you down to the ground. They want to break up your family. Some family, he him of a family, and some family bring down. But make sure he don't break your family up. Stay close to your wife if you are married. If you are not married, Brother, God may give you somebody to marry. Mm. God may give you somebody to marry too. Mm. Yeah, somebody for you, if you depend on him. Don't depend on no one to help you, but God himself. Mm -hmm. God, God, God. God the spirit. And then I worship God must. Worship God in spirit and in truth. Keep on worshiping. Keep on praying. Keep on singing. Keep on dancing, keep on trusting the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with your mind, and he's not on your own self. Because they want to bring it down. That's right. They want to bring it down, down to the ground. Mm -hmm. It's like a one line. Trying to seek him, may devour. He's trying, to devour. he's trying to pull you down, bring it down. But stand up for Jesus and be strong in the Lord. Be strong. So put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the world of the devil. That's what of God said in Ephesians chapter 6. I will just read 10, 11, and 12. So before you go to bed tonight, read those scriptures. Where the word of God shall keep you going, shall keep you strong, shall keep you focused. And stay strong, brethren, stay strong. And God will see you too. And that's my few words. I'm back to Mr. Thompson. Amen. And I said, I can't join you tonight. I don't know oh, yes. God do. bless you. Thank you, Pastor Wilson. God bless you. And God bless you, Minister Kelsey, for joining us. God greatly bless you. Um, you know, it's just good, but you know, you, the words of encouragement, you know, I always say that iron sharpened iron. And, you know, you have to be iron to sharpen iron. You can't take wood and sharpen iron. So we have to sharpen each other. You know, wood can't sharpen iron. Plastic can't sharpen iron. It has to be iron to sharpen iron. But thank you. A word of encouragement, you know, stand, stand fast in the liberty. I think, you know, it's a wonderful word. Which is where Christ has set us free and not no longer to be entangled with the yoke. We were under the yoke of bondage, but God Almighty has set us free. I'm going to ask Sister Rose to sing us a song before we close out. Praise the Lord. God bless you all for joining us. It's a wonderful, you know, come together and talk about the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. Look what he has done for us. We should be glorifying him and thanking him. He is so great. He's so wonderful. He's so blessed. We are so blessed. Blessed are the children of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Rose, sing us a song before we close. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Susie, everyone. And such an encouraging message tonight from Brother Trump and also Pastor Winston. So nice to see Mr. Kelsey on as well and everybody else that's on here tonight. Uh, God bless you all. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, and no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. 
on that happy golden shore. Oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. Thank you, Lord. What a day that will be when my Savior I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And when he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. Oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. There will be no sorrow there. And no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, and no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. Oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Rose. What a day that will be when our Jesus, when we shall see Jesus. What a day. The prophet says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It neither has it entered the heart of man, the things that God prepared for them that love him. That's a wonderful word. What a day. Eyes have not heard, ears have not heard. It not enter the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for us who love him. And another songwriter says, just a glimpse of him in glory will the toil of earth repay. So just a glimpse, just a glimpse of Jesus, just a glimpse, just a glimpse. And all the suffering that we've been through upon this earth, all the pain, all the sorrow, all the tears, all the, everything, just a glimpse will cover, pay for that. Just a glimpse of Jesus. Never mind a glimpse. Walking with him in the presence of the Almighty God. What a day that will be. What a day that will be. God bless every one of you and it's wonderful. Thank you all for joining us. And may the Lord richly bless you and keep you and cover you under, your, under his blood. God bless you, Pastor Winston, Minister Kelsey. I yes, see my son, much, yeah. my son Deli on there, PT, and everyone else. God bless you. It's wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless your holy name. Bless us and keep us, guide and protect us. Lord Jesus, have your way, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless Bye. every one of you and thank you for all for joining. Have a wonderful week. May the presence of the Lord stay with you. Amen. 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 God bless you, Minister Kelsey. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Delian. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Good to have you. Wonderful sermon, man. God is good. Give God the glory. I'm very encouraged. Wonderful. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Brother Delia, we'll talk, we'll talk later. God bless you. Good to have you, my son. Coming all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. 
is joining us. Bless you. Bless everyone. Amen.